Hi, my name is Uti. I'm going to my third year studying medicine at Cambridge and we're going to be looking at my personal statement today. I was fortunate enough to receive interviews from these four unis. So that's Cambridge, UCL, King's and Nottingham. So I'm going to try and use my personal statement to explain what I think made it good so the admissions tutors thought it was good enough to get an interview. So my first paragraph is all about my motivation. Why medicine? Just one thing I want to point out is that try and make your paragraphs well structured. So each one should have a certain theme. This one's about my motivation. So firstly, you can see that I've talked about a certain anecdote, which is one way of trying to make it interesting. Definitely not the best way, but if you want to talk about an anecdote that you have, then feel free to. And most importantly, you want to reflect on what you saw. So I saw that resilience under stress was something that was important. They could turn back and then ask me, well, what are the traits my doctors need things like compassion, which I've mentioned on here, things like empathy, integrity. Um, you want to be prepared. You want to have some answers ready about what traits doctors have, because it's important to know what kind of traits would, would be important, given that you want to enter the profession. So this introduction is quite short. Um, it gets straight to the point and it just details my motivation. So my next paragraph is about my work experience. One thing I want to point out as a little hack is to try and make your sentences flow. It's quite difficult to do, but if you can add a transition between paragraphs, it helps to make your personal statement sound like a story. Um, and that should help to convince them that you've thought about this thing through from start to finish. Secondly, I want to point out how they could have asked me about osteophytes in the knee x-ray. So when I was preparing for my interview, I made sure to look up those two things. I include them anyway, just because I wanted to show I was intellectually curious, which is a trait that they're looking for. Another thing that I thought was important was including something about teamwork and communication. It's something that you've probably heard loads of times and you're probably sick of hearing it, but you definitely want to include somewhere where you've seen a team work together. And to top it off, I wanted to mention how I demonstrated those skills as well. So I included the example of being a pastoral prefect. My next paragraph is then about volunteering. So volunteering, I think, is a really good way to show that you're committed to medicine. I mentioned how I volunteered weekly in a urology ward. I suppose the place itself isn't that important, as long as you've done some kind of long-term placement. Although with corona, it's quite difficult to do. So if you don't have it, it's not, it's not that it's essential, but where you have done some kind of long-term placement, it shows them that you are committed. Additionally, I think the most important thing was realizing that Medicine isn't something that's just amazing. It's not like Scrubs. It's not like those shows that you see Grey's Anatomy where it's it's always very, very exciting, high flying. It is really, really tough, actually, when you think about it. You're always caring for the sick. And one interview question that they could ask was what are the troubles and what are the trials involved with actually being a doctor, which is something I got in one of my interviews. So I made sure to reflect on the good and the bad as well. Furthermore, I think it's important to recognize that doctors don't do everything. So I mentioned how there's the entire team who, who who take care of the patient. It's not just the doctor who's doing everything. You've got the HCAs, the physios, the nurses, and you're showing that you understand that care of a patient is holistic. Um, and if you can mention that, that's definitely a buzzword and a keyword. So from this, I then try to tie together that I learned that you have to be empathic and these skills are ultimately important because they do enhance patient care. This next part was all about my second work experience placement and extra reading. So one thing I wanted to point out was that I had a range of work experience placements. Clearly this isn't needed. And although in coronavirus it's very difficult to get, if you can get it, then it's a good way to show that you've experienced medicine in two different settings. So here I talked about how resilience is really important because you have to deal with emotionally challenging situations. And I wanted to reflect more on that by reading a book. So a book is a good way to reflect on a skill that you haven't seen in person, but it still shows them that you've been proactive. So the book that I read, Do No Harm, uh, was an interesting book because the lesson that I gained from it was about palliative care. They could have then asked me about palliative care, end of life care, which helps me to, well, it helped me to kind of brush up on my ethical awareness. So I looked more into the four pillars of 
medical ethics, beneficence, non-maleficence, justice and autonomy. And you can then use those four skills to answer any type of ethical scenario that they might ask you in your interview. But most importantly, I think the book wasn't just there for me to tick a box, but the book was there for me to understand something that one, I couldn't experience in person. And but two, it's a really important skill to understand that doctors can't save everyone, essentially, which helps to improve my ethical awareness and also shows that I'm aligned with NHS values as well. My next part was then about my supercurriculars, which is particularly relevant because I was applying to Cambridge. So I used this part as a way to show that I was really interested in the science behind medicine as well. The example that I gave was that I entered an essay competition, which was about the differences behind the teenage and the adult brain. Now, you don't have to look into brain stuff. If you if you have a topic that you've learned about in school that interests you, then I would recommend looking more into it. If there are topics in school that maybe you're not as interested in, then you can download the BBC News app, actually. And if you get the health section, then there are lots of things on there where you can see real life cases. And then from that, you can then look into more things. And I think I included it just to show that I had intellectual curiosity. And I understood that medicine is all about finding evidence behind treatments. And often the evidence behind things comes from scientific research. So as well as entering the competition to show I was proactive, I also mentioned the skills I gained from it, which were critical thinking and practicing evidence based medicine as well, because I know that the foundation behind medicine is evidence. Furthermore, I think because I went out of my way to write the essay, it showed that I could handle the sustained and internal workload that is associated with medicine, not even just at Cambridge. Obviously, the workload is very intense, but medicine in all universities as well. What they could have done was they could have asked me further to elaborate on what I did. So they could have asked me, well, what actually is cDNA and the treatment that you talked about? How did it go? So I made sure that during my interview prep, I looked over the essays and I looked over the research that I did um, to make sure that I could answer it. Maybe not be an expert, of course, but to at least explain it to a level where it was understandable. And finally, I think the thing that ties everything together to just show that I am a medic after all, was that I mentioned that all of this was relevant because I was interested in patient care. So everything that I've done is to hopefully understand how to make patient care better, which distinguishes you from someone who wants to do natural sciences, for example. My penultimate section was then about my personal qualities. So here I talked about how, because I was a tutor, I had improved my communication skills. I could convey complex information, which is important when you're a doctor trying to explain things to patients. Um, you really have a chance during this section to talk about your own personal traits and make it personal to you. I also mentioned about how I entered the chemistry challenge and the biology Olympiad to emphasize that I was good at problem solving. And one thing that I think was actually important for most people to show, if not everyone, is that you can balance work and still have a good either social life or a healthy work-life balance as well. Because being a medical student and also being a doctor is quite demanding. So they could ask in interviews, well, how do you actually manage a high workload while still taking care of yourself? Uh, I tried to prove that by saying that I could prioritize tasks and you know I do athletics, etc., And I maintain all this while I'm still doing my studies. So if there are any hobbies that you do currently, please definitely continue them and use them to show the admission students that you can actually manage a high workload because in the future it's something that you're going to need to do working you're going to need to be able to balance shifts you're also going to, need to be balancing studying as well as your work life as well um, and you're going to do that to avoid burnout because burnout is definitely very real so keep on doing your tasks and hobbies to keep yourself occupied outside of medicine And we finally got to the conclusion. So my conclusion was actually quite short and I always recommend people to make it short as well. It should really recapitulate your motivation behind things. And if you ever stop it with a conclusion, because it is quite hard to write, I know the struggle is definitely very difficult. You can pick out three qualities that you think were really important. So the three that I chose were tenacity, diligence and compassion. And everything you should have said during your personal statement, hopefully you should have convinced them that yes, you're motivated, Yes, you have a realistic insight and yes, you have qualities that fit 
what you deem to be traits desirable to be a good doctor. So that's it, that's our personal statement. I really hope you found it useful. These paramedics have a personal statement review service which you can find on their website. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos in the future.